Hunshai by Venice. Chapter 14. Ally. With a quick snap, May retracted her arm from the arc of electricity. The telltale burn of it lingered as her hand throbbed and grew numb. She held a trembling limb to her chest as she continued to duck and weave past the free glowing streams of electricity standing between her and her adversary. How is this even allowed? The girl asked herself as she watched the agile Groovile easily pass the Transformers. Looked back her through the maze, the leaves on its forearms bound together as a blade is to the signal the anxious for the familiar battle. Hold on, I'm almost there! May Harlan entered the grove vial as she ducked under the final stream of electricity. After a deep breath, she brushed herself off and looked at a man that stood at the back of the building with a spiteful glare. He was a portly old man with a jagged beard white covering his chin, wearing a brown leather jacket with a lightning bullet sitting above one of the pockets. Miss stood idly as May stumbled to her feet with her arms and legs covered in burns. Welcome to my vial, Jim. You must be May Stannis. I'm watching. He said, looking his challenger over. The group vial took a fighting stance, growling through clenched teeth. May lifted her hand and the lizard fell silent, leaving only the sound of crackling electricity as he approached the old trainer. I'm here for the dynamo badge. May spoke with ferocity, raising her voice to be heard over the sound of buzzing electricity behind her. She so he removed her badge case from her badge and flipped it open to show the man. The pair of badges was then gleaming in the light of the electricity. Very well. The gym leader began. I'm ready when... You know what the gym must be going through. It must be tough. The old man said, peering the dull silence of the gym. I lost many family members over the years. I'm sure that your grandfather's death must weigh on your thoughts. May looked dejectedly down on the floor. Tears welling up her eyes. Yeah. I just wish I could have known him a bit more before he died. Mace Grovile slated up to her. Grovile. Grovile. A small smile crusting the girl's face as it was covered by her and thus leaning to her hand. He was a good man, that much I know. I talked to him quite a bit back in the day. The old man said with a warm, nostalgic smile. Well, back to you. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be taking classes right now? Things haven't been going so well. My mother has been feeling ill since Grandpa died, and my father wanted me to go out and experience things while I could. May said, sinking a little as she spoke. He said that with the move and Grandpa's death, I should try something less stressful. So, here I am. May paused for a moment. Has Brendan been through here? About my age, wears green bandana and a black and orange jacket? I'm supposed to meet him around here. Oh yes, I remember the lad. What strange Pokemon he had, Watson said before looking up and thought. He was here a few days ago, but that's all I can tell you. Thank you, May responded. Her tone resonated with disappointment. She slipped her badge case back into her pocket, hoping to win another badge to place next to her sole accolade from Rustboro. I'm sure I'll find him soon enough. Even if all that's happened, you're still a call but collected. The portly man chuckled. <laughs> you really are your father's daughter. From his coat pocket, the man threw out a Pokeball. With a smirk on his face. The ball, he considered the ball a moment before tossing it onto the field. The ball split open, revealing a small, wolf-like creature that snarled and sprang into ready. Let's get started, then. You got shake! With a snap of his fingers, the lights of the gym grew dim as a lightning bolt shaped neon side glowed brightly behind him. I am Watson, third gym leader of Hogwarts Pokemon League. May Stannis, daughter of Norman, I humbly accept your challenge for admittance into the Pokemon League. With a mask of fierce determination, May shook her bared hand and thrust it towards Watson, prompting her girl vile to take up his battle position. Raven when you are, old man! Very well, Watson stayed coldly, before everything tur turned blurred and grew dark. Fireside awoke with a jolt, the ecstatic cheering in the crowd drawing her back into consciousness. She held her head in her hooves, tried to piece together the strange memory flash that had just occurred. It had been days since one had manifested on its own. But never one had been so strange, so fractured. First I looked below. Once the university student tried it out the arena as Watsy turned away. She appeared to be discussing something with a black student stallion. A small tap on the glass drew the Pegasus' attention to Rainbow Dash. The sign mare staring intensely at the field below. Hose pressed against the glass, her muzzle pressed up as well, teeth bared in a scowl, her wings fully sprayed. The yellow Pegasus wanted to approach her, but thought better of it. 
recognizing a familiar intensity in Dasa's familiar. Before Fluttershy could return her focus to the memory, Pinky hopped out behind Rainbow. Cassie Fluttershy very surprised. Fluttershy, you're up! You must have been super tired. I tried waking you up over and over and over again during the fight! The pink mare looked at Fluttershy inquisitively, tilting her head confused. You alright? You don't look so good. I... I'm alright. Fluttershy said, pausing to think of Pinky helped her piece the memory together. It's just... I had a memory flash again. You did? That explains a lot. Pinky stayed, leaning on Rainbow and thought as her friend turned her head towards Pinky in irritation. That second layer, they both toppled over to the pain glass and slipped onto the floor. For Christ's sake, Pinky's break to her host continued, oblivious to the death glare remaining in front of down Pegasus. So, what was it about? Anything important or exciting? Well, it was strange. It was like there were two memories happening at once. I guess, both of them getting in each other's way. It started off normally, with the man you saw Rustboro Jim about to fight Watson. But, then it changed to a quieter girl. Pinky's face got totally confusing, as Rainbow got to her hose and rubbing her head as he got up. They talked about her grandfather and Brendan, and then May was back to her old self. That's all really happened. Brendan? That jerk from Rustboro with the fire lizard? Rainbow asked, when he's folded onto her sides. What was she talking about him for? She said something about finding him, but never said why. I've never seen this May before, so I don't know if I should trust her. Fire's I see a security car came into the room. Fifteen minutes until you're due down by the doors, miss. He said before stepping out for a second and letting his student into the below room. He was a brown earth pony with an open white collared shirt, a poking nap stabbed to his ankle, and down sort of as well. He quickly stepped into the room and placed his bag down on the floor before venturing further into the suite. Uh, uh, are you sure this is the right room? He asked with a slight stutter. Probably a quick nod while the guard closed the door. The you know, stallion turned and faced the three mares, not saying a word as he approached the couch. Huh? What's your name? Piggy insisted as they claimed, hopping right up to the stallion. Recoiled back in a nervous fit, stumbling over himself as Pinky loomed over him. I it's steak. The stallion stayed, as Pinky backed off to let him regain his huffing. The three planned to meet with the university student after a match. This was once easier than Flair's I had ever anticipated. Putting a confident smile on her face as he pondered what to do. With no more obvious choice, Flutterside tried out to help Jake in hopes he could tell her about Professor Maxwell. Hello, Flutterside said, causing Jake to turn his head with mouth slightly agape. You're a student at Montville University, right? He stared at her with a dumbfounded look, before forcing his mouth to shut to avoid looking foolish. Yeah, I am. Why? Do you go there? I think I will remember, sister. I mean, I think I will remember you. Jake asked, his face was a deep red. No, I just need to know about teacher there. Do you know Professor Maxwell? Maxwell? Oh yeah, he's uh, the ancient cultures of archaeology professor. Are you trying to get into his class or... Wait, you just said... Professor Hope had his head with a pain expressed in plaster on his face. Where is he now? Can we talk to him? First I asked, trying to see a conversation back to the professor's whereabouts. Oh, I think he's up for a week. Jake said, lowering himself to his forehead and his chin in thought. Yeah, he's up at Mount Timney with some students to study the volcano. He has a bit of history of going off topic and delving into geological studies. The stallion stayed with a surprising lack of stairs. Should be back within a week. Where's Mount Timney? Wait, seriously, who doesn't know about Mount Timney? I'm sorry, I still need to hold it. Fireside squeaked. Oh, it's just north of here on the way to Laverance Town. Tell us about in the range, you can't miss it. The door opened again feeling the same security guard before Pinky through the doorway. You're expected to go to the front gate in less than five minutes. Let's go. As the security guard had left, Flutterside turned away from Jake to get her bag as her friend stood on the same and stood by the door. Thanks for your help, Flutterside said as he caught up to Rainbow and Pinky. As he was about to exit the room, she stopped to turn back to the face of young Zion. Sorry for asking, but what kind of Pokemon was the next to you at the start of the match? You mean my grill vial? Take ass, tossing out Pokeball or feeling a sleeping Pokemon. Grovile. Grovile. Yeah. Flutterside responded. Glancing over at the grass lizard as he sat down next to it. As he looked it over, as he fell over for him, he had a somber sense of nostalgia and walked over to it. It was the exact Pokemon May had in her Flutterside's visit. But something felt wrong. Instead of the comfort May received from the Pokemon, 
First, I felt like she had been punched in the gut. Her body's shaking. She rolls back to her hose and gave Jake a small smile. Thanks for showing it to me. Fireside said graciously. I still use a her. You're welcome. Jake says Fireside exited the room. As Pixis went down the stairs, she stopped to turn to see that Jake was staring down at her from the doorway. Oh, would you be able to show us where the Pokemon Center is after the match? We have to get some rest before going to Mount Chimney tomorrow. None of the mayors had thought of the combinations for tonight. Uh, so sure, I'll be the challenger side exit after the match, Jake said. It's on the east side of the field. Thank you so much. What as I said before she did send her the stairs. As he caught up to her friend, mind focused slowly on the encounter with the grill vial. She wondered for a moment if the pain came from Alice's transformation, but she hadn't put, been very attached to the lizard before he had changed. Before she could come up with any more ideas, however, she had already caught up with her friends. Raymond was at the front, hastily marching down, his pinky trying with a calm but excited attitude just behind. The rubble of the crowd shook to stadium as their match slowly approached. Since he was unconscious during the entire match, Flareside had no idea what the gym leader looked like, or if she was, in fact, an analog. Judging by Rainbow's intense expression when she awoke, her friend must have known something about the mare. Rainbow, why were you staring down in the field like that? Flareside asked. Rainbow turned her head to face to her questioner. You were feeling angry back there. I was, Rainbow answered bluntly. Does you two remember that unicorn that came to town with that mobile stage? The one who boasted about how she was the most magical unicorn in all of Equestria? I swear you two were there. No, I don't remember that, Flair's eyes said. As he said this, Pinky inhaled and sharply, I guess. <gasps> oh, right! Flair's eye, I went off with you to see some of your animals when she was talking, remember? Pinky asked, looking at Flair's eye, then back at Rainbow. That unicorn just sounded obnoxious, and I remember I had to help Mrs. Cake fans a cupcake for Sticky Corner. And you forgot Angel's birthday, so we had to have a party for him before we... So, we left. Well, I'll try to explain to you after you left, Rainbow began. She called herself the great and powerful Trixie, and I nearly gagged on how full of herself she was. When they reached the bottom of the stairs, noticing several ponies buying food and sneezing next to the arena doors. When every pony was sick of her bragging, A.C. Ferdinand and I challenged her to shut up. But all she did was twist what we did around and made us laughing stocks. Rainbow's face grew bright red as she spoke, stopping towards the door instead of trying. I did this amazing trick through clouds, and made up a rainbow show up above me, and she twisted his pony around before stabbing me with lightning. I can't wait to get my hands on her when I get the chance. Security guards stopped in front of the area doors and waited beside the free mares. What happened to her? Flair's eye asked. Her curiosity peaked. She said she could visit er, Fank was a nurse of major, but Twilight State Ponyfield with two tailed doofuses brought a nurse of minor to Trixie for fight. After Twilight humiliated her by defeating her, the coward ran off. Rainbow peered up the screen near the gate that was playing a commercial. Haven't seen her since. Several minutes passed as they waited for the last stragglers to return to their seats. First, I could hardly hear any pony inside the stadium, lending it an ear in silence. Rainbow stood tapping her hose on the floor impatiently. Pinky decided to sit down and proceed to yawn every once in a while, out of boredom. This is Flair was about to lie down as well. The announcer's voice blared through the speaker system. Ladies and gentle Colts, tonight we have a special mystery tier as Watsi's final opponent. The crowd began to cheer uproariously, putting Flair in an edge as he began to question her ability to win. Argos had just evolved, and Wolfer was still very weak by comparison. She didn't want to embarrass her friends in front of so many ponies. She began to hyperventilate. The announcement continued above the noise of the rowdy audience. All anyone knows about this trainer is that he or she has only one badge, but as a fierce competitor, Jesse fight a flawless combat record. <sighs> okay, Flareside, I know this is scary. <laughs> I know this is nerve-wracking. <laughs> and I know you currently only have two Pokemon with you. <laughs> and none of them have a type of advantage over the electric type. Well, I can assure you, we are all 100% behind you all the way. Thank you, Godzilla. Just relax, rely on yourself, and trust in the part of the cards. Uh, part of the cards? You mean I'm not trying to support you on a Pokemon card game? No. Oh, dang, that was going to be easy. I mean... Winning the Pokemon card game is just, is simple enough. Winning a Pokemon battle with only two Pokemon, that's gonna be t something. 
But you should be fine, Flutters. Flutters Eye? Wow, it's record. Flutters Eye wondered, reminding of Peg. Did the fight with Norman not count? Please welcome your final competitor at this weekend's arena fights! The door slowly creaked open, the stinging of massive light blinding as a tree as he shone into the dark hallway. With a pained gulp, Flutters Eye tried into the grass filled arena with Rainbow and Pinky followed close behind. The now ponies in the stadium was staggering to her. Being below the crushing stare, that many didn't call her in the least. You right, Pershing? Pinky asked. This is so exciting, don't you think? I know that thousands of ponies are watching, but it's like a giant party in here! Flutters Eye hesitantly nodded as he stopped at the challenges to end our tag or fighting ring. The lights in the stadium suddenly grew dark as a single spotlight shone on the empty stage. There was a yellow fabric with stars and lightning bolts scurrying the bottom of the stage. And a large light blue symbol of a magic wand swirling with magic plastered above. As the smoke poured over the cable strewn stage with the loudspeakers boom, now, without further introductions, the electrifying and powerful Let's see! With a crack of lightning, a point stepped forth from the swirling smoke, sending the crowd in a frenzy of stabbing hooves. It was a light blue mare with a blonde swirl of the mane. She wore a yellow cape covered in black stars, and a closed yellow vest with a magic wand insignia on the front. On her ankles were gold cufflinks in her eyes, a yellow translucent fire there that concealed the color of her eyes. While she looked soft somehow, something was missing. Where's her horn? Flares I asked, turning to confuse the ra angry Rainbow Dash. I don't know, Rainbow Man. So, what of you as Lachi's opponent, hmm? <laughs> The Tim Weir asked, speaking in the third person. Don't keep the crowd waiting. Let's one of you. I will be fighting Hotsy tonight. Flares I insta head of her friends. Rang herself to speak before Rainbow Dash passed her in a swirl of wind and wings. She skid to a stop in front of her friends before pointing her huff at the blue mare. I am she sighed, shocking both Flares I and Pinky. Not me. This is something I've been waiting for for in the Pokemon anime for ages. The crowd roared in anticipation as Watsi held her hop in the air, calling for silence. So, Rima here. Yes, what's your name? It seemed to have been glitched when I got it, Watsi asked, staring straight at the angry mare. The name's Rainbow Death! Before she could finish, she fell a pair of hooves and forced her mouth closed as far as I tackled her onto the field. Don't say your last name! Flares I warned her, confusing her brass friend. Why, it's just my name! I say similar her nose that absolutely whispered. Do you remember that police officer I talked to yesterday? When I mentioned your last name to him, he talked about some loss the dad's pie families went to. Please, we don't want any more attention drawn to us than there already is. Rainbow huffed. Fine! The new challenger pushed Fireside to the side, before stepping to the trainer's box. The name's Rainbow Bolt! Rainbow Bolt, huh? You look more like a dad to me. Watching Muse, giving Flareshy shivers. You know, now that I take a better look at you, you look like just Winona Daz. Seeing cutie mark and everything. Winona? Flareshy wondered, casting was the soul mare think of her next line. Why do I know a Winona? There's Applejack's dog, but does May know of Winona? Could she be a gym leader? What a shame you don't have her classy silver mane instead of that ridiculous multicolored flop. Watson commented. The crowd cheering as Rainbow's face flushed a bright red. Far as I knew that normally, Rainbow wouldn't be offended by an off-color remark by her mane. But apparently, whatever this trick she had done, she really hit Dash's soft spot. Hey, why does he stop talking to Flail Ray? Rainbow snapped, taking the Somare back. Oh shoot, does Torchic still have her flying type? Alright then, if you're not ready to lose, the electrifying and powerful Watsi will be hard to abide. A farmer came, she threw a Pokeball to the field. As it hit the ground, it broke open, releasing a pudgy, orange mouse with a lightning bolt at the end of a thin black tail to the field. Hey! It growled in a low tone as electricity sparked from his yellow cheeks. Destroy it, Igni! Rainbow called out, tossing the Torchic's Pokeball to the field. As Igni appeared, laughter erupted from Watsi as well as the crowd. Okay, Des, if it makes you feel any better, Torchic doesn't have her flying type yet, so it doesn't have a flying type, so you should be fine. A Torchic? What? She has never seen such a pathetic starter in her entire life! She snickered, succeeding in riling up the crowd. What? Igni isn't pathetic! Igni, show 
or what a pathetic Torchic does? Rainbow commanded, Torchic! Grinning her teeth at Krell as she stared the silver down. Well, at last, white hat embers shot from the Torchic's mouth, hanging the mouth square in the belly. Without even wincing, the electric Pokemon brushed the embers off before taking a defensive posture. You'll have to do better than that, Bolt. Right, you! Bloody slam! Watson commanded, and the right two sprang into action. Before Rainbow Dash could react, the Pokemon had sprinted down the field and slammed shoulder first into Igni, sending him flying towards Rainbow. He hit the ground hard, causing a large divot in the ground. Igni, are you alright? Rainbow asked. Sorry, Chick. Turning to see the right two's cheeks flowing electricity, strained Igni forced himself up, stumbling over as he returned to the Serenity Arena. Right you! Finish with Thunderbolt! Watchy is getting bored. Watchy stayed, and the right two began to glow with intense yellow light. For a second, only watch as Rainbow's mind raced to find something, anything for the D's he needed to do as a large bowl of electricity was flying into the sky by right you. Right you! Leave me! Run! It was the only thing Rainbow could yell out before the lightning bolt arced downward and stuck to Torchic. Die! Causing Rainbow to hold her mouth in her mouth as it hung open. Black and feathers smoking, Igni fought to the ground. Rainbow bolted out to the field, scooping out the fallen Pokemon to her chest, and held it in her hose. She pulled Igni close, suddenly lamenting her decision to jump into the gym fight. She glared menacingly at Watsi. The crowd erupted at boos and heckles. Watsi stood with a large grin on her face as she looked down at singing Rainbow Dash. Are you done? Watsi asked condescendingly, holding her hoof up to try to quiet the crowd. No! Rainbow snapped. Taking Loreka's Pokeball, tossing it to the field, as he galloped back to the trainer's ring and went in his safety his Pokeball. I'm not finished with you yet! She stared Watsi down as he wiped the lingering tears from her eyes. So, your amazing plan to show up Watsi after using Torchic is to challenge me with an Aeron! Trainers never cease to amaze me with how short sighted they are. Rainbow's face glowed bright red as she watched the right to begin to glow again. Aye. Lorica, tackle! Rainbow commanded. Watsi now trembling Lorica to try to speed down the field. We had halfway through before Raichu released a built up discharge, firing the boulder white jersey directly at Lorica. Right, straight through him, causing him to fall over, by twitching for the electrical surge. Angry, the cli crowd clamored for more, raining boos and heckles down on Rainbow as she slowly marched to the field. Marcy felt a lump in her throat as she saw Rainbow's mouth quiver at the sight of her fallen Pokemon. Eyes closed. Rainbow took a bolt from her Pokeball from her jacket and sent Lorica back in. <laughs> before staring fiercely at the show mare, closing her teeth as he glared at her point. Before Rainbow could stop was staring Watsy down, Firesai noticed a gym layer flipping a switch close to her head that was connected to her mic. Firesai watched as spoke to the Rainbow, but was unable to hear the mare's voices over the incessant booing in the crowd. After Watsi spoke, Rainbow turned and walked back to her end of the field, frustration soon to her voice. When they flipped his switch, the microphone crackled over the law spe speakers as Watsi held her hope to her chin. Audience, Watsi is surprised at you. Watsi thought you knew better than to heckle her own warm-up. Rainbow stopped, her mouth agape before showing stud. Frustration turned to rage once again. Watsi is sorry for the delay, but the mystery trainer is still amongst the three. The gym leader pointed at Fluttershy, kissing the Pegasus off Grodd. You, May Stennis, are Watsi's real opponent! A swell excitement came over the crowd as Fluttershy approached the trainer's box. Uh, how did he know? Why did he think it was me? Fluttershy asked, watching a smile creep over Watsi's face. It was easy. When Watsi received the name of her opponent, it crackled May Stan in flutters. Any trainer worth their salt would know your face, me. As the crowd cheered on, Watsi motioned with her hoof, calling Fluttershy over to her side of the arena. Curious, the Pegasus obliged. Turning over, she saw Watsi once again set her mic off. What is it? Fluttershy asked as he reached the cable strewn stage. Shall we be fighting? I know this may be personal, but, uh, what's Flutters? Watsi asked, dropping to third person speech and talking in a surprisingly male tone. I want to make sure none of the crowd hears it if it's too personal. Well, my name is. First, I paused, contemplating if Jim would believe her or not. She wouldn't even trust her with the truth. And what Flutters I could glean from May's memories, it didn't seem like she would have anything to do with the armored stallion. 
The rainbow story of the unicorn in Ponyville gave her cause to doubt. It's, it's Fluttershy. My real name isn't me. F Fluttershy. Watson repeated, confused. Why does it mean you sound so familiar? As he thought, Watson's face turned to that of shock. But he could stare at him and say something. I, uh, n never mind. You're here for a gym battle. I won't make you wait. The Megas had simply nodded before trying back to her side of the arena. The speakers crackled to life once again. Sorry for the delay. Watsy needed to make sure Miss Stannis knew who she was dealing with, Watsy said, grinning as the crowd began chanting her name. Let's get this started then! Watsy reared up on her hind legs and raised her front hose into the air. The steam once again grew dark as a single spotlight shone on the field, leaving everything around them pits as black. I am Watsy, third team leader of Pony's Pokemon League. I accept your challenge, May Stannis. Come, show us what you can do. Watsy recited before sending her right to back to the arena, its cheeks sparking as it rayed itself. Show us all. Right, you. With a deep breath to calm herself, first I tossed out her Poke first Pokemon. She tried keeping her concentration away from the outpouring of attention she was getting from the crowd. Free from his Pokeball, Arrow is planted his leg firmly in the ground. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
watch his scuff. <laughs> and Mocha is already at its strongest. I like that mutt you call a Pratiana. Prachi! He never evolves, but is powerful enough already. You sure you want your precious Pokemon to be taken out so easily? Wolver begins snarling as Rainbow Slender hopped to the ground. Where does she get off? Rainbow argued. Where should I step that red out? Is he being a bit harsh? Thinking yes. I don't really see what you find so wrong with her. She humiliated me in front of everyone. Is calling us idiots for not knowing their dumb system. I don't know. She's the first time of flying is strong against Crash, didn't she? She's held out a lot so far. Are you done stalling? Watsy called out, bringing Fireside's attention back to the fight. Watsy would suggest you use your command before my whole audience falls asleep. Alright then, Wolfer, tackle it! Fireside commanded, and Wolfer responded in kind as he bulleted towards the flying squirrel, lost himself into the air, humming just out of Wolfer's reach. Air slash! Watsy stayed coolly. Prompting the Amalga to slip down, glowing some wings. Amalga! It buzzed by several times, slashing at Wolfer as he tried forcing it to the ground. Buy it! Flyer's head called out. As the Amalga passed again, Wolfer caught it in his mouth, biting on down before releasing it. Tackle! As the electric Pokemon stumbled back, Wolfer plowed into it head first. Causing it to fly back and cry out in pain. But once he realized it, a small, unwanted smile appeared on Flyer's head's face. She took her head out of it to rid herself as panic gripped her. She never taken joy in Amble's suffer. She read her mind as to why it was happening now. And thinking May's personality was coming further in, the smile quickly faded and war was done fell to the ground. Fast coming up in short, startled, exciting grass. Wolfer, are you okay? Fudgy, Anna, Fudgy, Anna. Well, so far as I was able to ask, before a familiar, ghostly right aura enveloped the fallen Pokemon. Yep, this is the Pokemon anime, alright! My apologies. That's... As Wolfer tried to stand, he had the saliva, unless his ours had done before. His body arched, his bracket grew in size. The beard four on his back and legs grew thick into a sea of black as his eyes shrunk and twisted, granting him an angrier demeanor. The three final black streaks struck down his face before the aurora dissipated and Wolfer howled. Mariana! Must the excitement of the crowd. Uh, what's wrong, Trixie? Uh, when you were using that baton to create this... The music. There's this massive windstorm. What happened? Oh, um, I've been playing Wind Waker a lot lately, and, um, Andy let me borrow his. Darn you. Evolving your Pokemon in the middle of the match. Watch, he chuckled. Ha <laughs> ha You are definitely your father's daughter. Thanks. Why is I responded? Wondering if Watsi's compliment was genuine? just remembered of her own personality from May's memories. The Pegasus took a deep breath. The Wolver looked at her for as the Amalga struggled to stand. He's Tackle! She commanded, prompting the newly evolved Pokemon to charge the electric girl and knock it to the front of Wasi's stays. It sat, pinned to the stage by the sheer force of the Tackle, before sliding unceremoniously to the ground, collapsed unconscious. Wasi has no more remaining Pokemon! The announcer declared, now he's signing a massive war to fill the stadium. As Watsy dropped down from the stays to console her fallen Pokemon. <sniffs> as she sent it back to the Pokeball, she turned off her mic and directed Flyerside to come to the middle of the stadium. May stand assistant winner, and one step closer to challenging the champion of the whole league! The announcer said. Flyerside nodded, slowly trying to stare as she reveled in the tears of her captive audience. Maybe being seen by all these ponies wasn't so bad after all, she thought. Watsy dug through her bag to be concealed by her cape and held out a gold badge. It was seen like a circle with a bar piercing through it diagonally. Here you go. You deserve this. The dynamo badge. Watsy said, placing the bags on her flutter huff. Take this as well. She took out a small bag from her cape and placed it into the next badge. 2,400 gold pieces as your bounty. Uh, maybe one day I'll figure out why your name sounds so familiar to me. It does feel so ominous to me. As she turned her microphone on again, before stepping back, gesturing to Flyer's eye. 
Your champion! Watch he said, looking Flare's Eyes Huff, as the crowd cheered even harder with Flare's Eyes tentatively bowed. Thank you. Flare's Eyes said, replacing her new badge that's beside her from Rustboro. After thinking Wasi's huff, she made her way back to her friends who looked eager to see her. That was amazing! Thinky cheered, hopping around as he made her way to the exit. I can't believe you already have another evolved Pokemon! Thinky petted Wolf as he walked beside the tree. Mariana! That's leading up against Flare's Eye. Mariana! Thanks, Pinky. Flare's Eye said, patting Wolf on the head as he left to the side exit. There, standing in the middle of the hallway, was Jake. He galloped up to the three, excited look on his face. Congratulations! I saw the whole thing on the TVs up there. He said, pointing to the two televisions at the top of the corners of the gates. You said you needed to find a Pokemon Center around here, right? Yes. Fireside answered, looking at Rainbow Dash, who still seemed to be fuming. Are, are you okay? Oh, she's just being a cranky pants. Piggy said while snoring, making Rainbow groan and roll her eyes. It's just... I did mutilated by her twice! Twice! Rainbow shied before she sighed. Let's just go to the Pokemon Center. Twice, Jake asked. Did she fire before? What? No, I just... Never mind, let's just go. All right, follow me, Jake said, leading them out of the steam and leading to the massive crowd of ponies. As he exited, he started to take them west. They could certainly stay close to him so they didn't get lost within the rabble. He crossed the street and walked down the sidewalk. Fireside yawned as the gym mass began to fade. You know, there's a lot of history down this road. A long time ago, Mauville City was just a small town. A lot of the original buildings still stand. One's from before the population of the city skyrocketed. Call it with the history lesson, Rainbow interrupted. I just want to get some sleep and this day over with. Rainbow! Piggy sighed, scolding Rainbow. Uh, she momentarily halted her joyous hopping. You know... Piggy began turning her back to their guide. You kind of remind me of my friend Twilight, talking about old buildings and history and all that boring stuff. Boring? I don't think it's boring, Jake said. He's too as a defeated by Piggy's comment. Yeah. As far as I agree with Jake, Mr. Twilight's name for up thoughts of home. She was close to forgiving herself for making Twilight try that difficult spell. But it was hard when she hadn't heard anything from the unicorn in such a long while. Farsight so looked into the buildings and noticed most of them had intricate designs carved into stonework. They excluded an old world charm, each of them weathered by the ravages of time. But they stood tall, covering the Pegasus with their sense of prominence, of stability. It put a smile on her face, and gave her something to focus on as they made their way to the Pokemon Center. Here we are, Jake stated, holding up a hub to stop the girls from going any further. Farsight so turned to look to the familiar Pokemon Center, set in the sandstone near the top of the four story building lit only by the bright light from wrought iron lantern sliding the road. Yep, it's the oldest Pokemon Center in the whole city. Probably the earliest remaining revival-style hospital in the whole region. He said with such enthusiasm, he first I wondered if he was actually majoring in architecture. Thank you so much. First I said, trying to see if there was any way into the old building. Is there some way we can repay for this? Oh, no worries. I didn't really have anything to do after my match anyways. So I figured it was a good way to kill some time. I'll probably be staying here for the night. My grill file needs to be healed up, and he has some really comfortable beds upstairs. Sounds good, Rainbow said, excited for a change. I'll go up ahead and see if they have any rooms. I want to get up and take a look at my wing before I go to sleep. With that, Rainbow made her way to the doorway, leaving the three to go on their all accord. I need to drop off hours of Wolfram at the nurse's desk. Go up without me, Pinky. Flares, I said, opening the door for herself and peeking inside. The inside of the hospital looked up at the seam as all the others, complete with couches, televisions in the exact same positions. The only thing that seemed to be different was that stairwell on the right went up instead of down. Pinky and Jake soon followed. We're in room 3E on the third floor, Rainbow announced, before charging up the stairwell. Meet the girls up there! Wait for me, Dazzy! Pinky hollered, galloping up the stairs of the Pegasus at the same breakneck speed. After the pink pony disappeared on the stairs, first I made her way to the front desk. She noticed the white mare behind the counter, quaking intently for Fireside. You friends with the rainbow maned one? The mare asked. Just as Fireside returned Wolfer to his Pokeball. Yes, I am, Fireside whispered. You are two keys to the room. I was going to give your pig friend a key, but she left before I could. She slid two keys across the counter, looking at the Pokeball and Fireside's self. Just one Pokemon tonight? No, two actually. Fireside said, taking out Arles' Pokeball and placing both on the counter. Or snatching the two keys from the carrot top. Thanks for looking after them, 
they ran into a gym fight. Oh, are you May? I just saw you on the TV. Nice job. Nora said before taking the two Pokeballs. I'll make sure they're healed for you in the morning. Thank you. What as I said before trying to fly the stairs? Yes, he knows Jake's sitting on one of the couches. Where are you going to do, Jake? I'll just get my own room. No need to bother you girls any more than I already have. He explained, passing by her as he made her way to the counter. Whereas I bid him a quick farewell and ascended the stairs, reaching the third floor. She made her way down the plush-looking hallway and found a room 3E on the right side towards the end of the hall. Whereas I took one of the keys and unlocked the door. Inside, she found Piggy set up her bed as Rainbow inspected her wing. How's your wing feeling? First I asked, trying not to Rainbow to expect it herself. Want me to take a look at it? I'll be fine. I think it'll just be one more day before I'll fly again. Rainbow said with a look of determination on her face. As she folded her wings back, she yawned and hopped onto the bed, before kinding herself with burgundy seats. Good night! Rainbow said before turning away, a series of soft snores soon emanating from the exciting Pegasus. Once I tried out to her bed to get it ready, gently fluffing the seats while Pinky simply popped onto the bed and fell asleep instantaneously. Once I chuckled, setting her backpack down before she headed to the light switch. Flipping it off, she yawned as she tried over to her own bed. After putting her Pokedex and Pokenav into her bag, she carefully slid it beneath the covers and closed her eyes. She shifted herself a bit, trying to make herself comfortable before she found the perfect spot. As she relaxed, she sunk her head down to the down-filled pillow. Breathing slowly, she drifted off to sleep. Flirtside slowly opened her eyes, yawning as she squirmed beneath the covers. It was still the middle of the night, and things were quiet and tranquil in the room. After tossing and turning several times, she scooted out the bed and rummaged through her bag to get out a canteen of water. As she dug through the bag, she felt something was off about the room. Far as I had no idea what it was, until so she started digging and listening to the silence. The complete and utter silence. Not even the noise of her friend sleeping. Quickly, Fireside put the light on, only to find Rainbow and Pinky to be gone. Not knowing what to do, she went through her bag again and realized her poker nav was missing. Where are they? Fireside wondered in a panic. Why didn't you leave me alone up here? What happened to my poker nav? What if... Without another thought, she slung the backpack over her shoulder and left the room and searched it down. Fireside traveled down the stairs as quickly as she could and found the same nurse she had talked to who was still standing behind the counter. As Flareside tried over to her, Flareside asked, Excuse me, have you seen my friends? Thoughts of Rainbow and Pinky being polynapped played themselves out in her subconscious. The two nurses who came in with her earlier, the nurse asked as she took a step back, makes a distance between her and the frantic Pegasus. They both just came down just a bit earlier. Do you know where they went? Flareside inquired her anxiously, leaning over the counter. The one with the Rainbow Mane said something about going north to train. What about Pinky? I asked her out of curiosity. But she shushed me and said it was a strange a secret. She closed her eyes and shook her head. You hang out with some strange folk. Thanks. But as I said, galloping out of the Pokemon Center and heading north to try to find Rainbow Dash. The streets were relatively empty, with only a few sleazy poking, ponies wandering about. Without a Poke Nav, she had no map to really hide. So she began zigzagging away from street to street as she went north, trying to find some place Rainbow might be training. Ten minutes passed before Fireside finally found her way out into Mauville City. She exhausted herself of worry, and now found herself slowly to a trot as she passed the city limits. Luckily, city lights illuminated much of the path out, including small street lights, and a few lanterns which aligned the northbound path. Fireside kept her pace, keeping her eyes peeled as she looked deep into the forest brush. The only things she could hear were the quiet sounds of nocturnal animals moving around within the trees. She used this to calm herself. That seems she was trying peacefully just outside her cottage. She continued to dwell on her fantasy, until a large crash from further down the path snapped her back into reality. Worried about what it could be, she sped up to a gallop, wondering if it might have been Rainbow. For the sound spit, it was hard to imagine what was ahead could be training. A breath clinked as she bolted down the road, looking frantically for any sign of her friend. Suddenly, a blue bar flew by, directly in front of her face, making her stumble backwards as she watched it slam headlong into a tree. Splatterside stared at it for a moment before recognizing it as Rainbow Dash. The sighing pigs is flopping deep first into the dirt. Rainbow! Splatterside shouted as Rainbow opened her eyes with a fierce, determined look before getting to her hose and galloping back towards the breast. Splatterside extended the hump to try to stop her, but it was no use as the Rainbow Mane pigs disappeared into the forest. All she could see was the occasional rustle of buses, 
I saw a large plume of flame rose up from behind the brush, looking the leaves and making her worry the forest was about to burn. She heard more impacts. Rainbow was not deaf from the brush again, skiing to a stop on the ground with her teeth bared. Rainbow! First I yelled, finally casting the rough up Rainbow's attention. She had several cuts and scrapes over her body, as well as dirt and leaves sticking to her coat. What are you doing out here? Training! Rainbow replied monosyllably before watching an unfamiliar, bipedal Pokemon hop out of the bus. It was almost as tall as the mares, standing on its legs that were in reminiscence of Igni's. It had horns lower, and a yellow upper body with wing-like arms extending into a trio of claws. It stood proudly with three orange feathers atop its head, looking at a pair of pigs with a fierce look in its eyes. What? Did Igni- Yep! Rainbow announced proudly. He followed after in just a few minutes. It was so awesome! Anyway, Lorica and Lady were in the midst of a mess for a math word, so... You brought Lady with you? First I asked in a worried tone. What Pokemon does Pinky have with her right now? Wait. What do you mean what Pokemon does Pinky have? Rainbow asked perplexed. Is she back at the Pokemon Center? No, she's gone too. First I stayed, worrying what Pinkie Pie could be getting herself into. Do you have my poker now? It's missing from my bag. I never touched it. I just brought it letting you along for some training, Rainbow explained. Like I said, we need to have all our Pokemon involved to stand a chance. Oh, okay. Rain flares, I said, sitting down and catching her breath. She took a swig of water while Rainbow sat down next to her. They both sat down, down in relative silence. First, I watched the movement of the leaves as the cold wind blew, letting the cool breeze give her a strong feeling of being back in Ponyville. A reminder when she was sitting near a college, and some suddenly listened to the leaves rustle in the winds. Rainbow, do you miss home? Whereas I asked, I merely wondered why she would ask such an obvious question. The way that May's personality and the whole reason had begun seeping into her own thoughts made her worry that her friends were feeling the same. Yeah, this adventure is fun and all, but getting back to Wonderbolt's training can't come soon enough. Rainbow said, smiling as he returned Igni to his Pokeball. <laughs> Can't say I'm not excited to meet that professor tomorrow. That armor stallion must be pretty important the professor knows about. So he paused a moment before jumping in front of Fireside. Wait a minute, did you see anything in your memories about that armored freak? I'm sure May would know something. I... I don't remember anything. I only remember one thing he said. That his voice sounded really familiar. As in... May saw him a lot? No, more personal than that. His voice just sounded... off somehow in the memory. Like he was acting or something. Maybe you'll get more out of May once we meet this Professor Maxwell guy. Rainbow says she stood up, looking at Marville sit sitting down the road. She yawned and helped Fireside to her host. I'll go back to the hotel for some sun eye. You coming? Yeah. Fireside confirmed as the two mares tried back to the city. The pair dared quiet from exhaustion as they both let the cooling winds call them in preparation for the well-deserved rest that laid ahead. Don't worry, Sir Piggy is just fine. While those staying was quiet, all the ponies had left for the night. The entrance was guarded by a single pony, dressed in a deep blue navy uniform. Luckily for Pinky, he was asleep at a post, letting her slip easily into the stadium. As she made her way inside, she noticed the lights lining the outer hallways were dimmed, but still on, letting her see where she was going as she traversed the shallow stadium. Her first impulse was to go into the arena to see if there was any sign of the ponies she was looking for. Being Pinkie Pie, she did just that. No, I refuse to think that Pinkie Pie is going to sneak anywhere without at least humming her own s sneaky theme at least once. Thank you! All the bright lights that had left the stadium a few hours ago were completely dark, leaving the area lit only by the gym fluorescent light seeping through the cracks around the doors in the hallways. Pink Pony tilted her head up, looking for any sign of life in the stadium. She was on an important mission, and wasn't going to fail. She made a pass, so she could see no lights in any of the box suites, or offices that lined the middle and upper crest of the stadium. She could see no pony was at home. Just as she was about to leave her search elsewhere, a white light flickered on. Pinky looked up at Squid, trying to make out the pony that had entered an office in the upper section of the stadium. Pinky gave a little hop and a skip of excitement as he realized the mystery pony was watching draped in her nightgown. The pink pony immediately waved her forehose frantically and attempted to catch the air pony's attention. 
After Pinky flailed her woes for a few seconds, Watsy pressed her face against the window and looked down into now or ecstatically bouncing Pinky. With what looked like a sigh, Watsy stepped away from the window and disappeared from view. Pinky decided to wait, hoping Watsy had to meet her down the steam and hoping not to call the police. As he predicted, after several minutes of waiting, Watsy entered the field from the northern gate. She yawned as he approached Pinky, trying lazily as he forced her eyes to stay open. Who are you, and what are you doing here? Watsy demanded with a hiss. She sought towards the pink pony, face contorting in frustration and darkness as the stadium cast deep circles beneath her eyes. It's three in the morning, and I have a lot of paperwork to get done for tomorrow. My name is Pinky, Pinky exclaimed, trying to avoid using her last name, as well as I insisted. I just wanted to talk in. She stopped to stop Watsy and query his clips. Hey, look kids, you aren't talking to the third person anymore. Oh, that! The cheerleader chuckled. Ha <laughs> ha That's just my stick. It helps bring in an audience. She tried to call her to Pinky, looking over before stepping back. Oh, wait. Aren't you Rainbow Bolt's friend? Oh, no. You're not here to sue for defamation of character, are you? No, nothing like that, silly. Pinky said with a smile. Wait. You're talking in the third person's part of your stick. Then, what's with the rolling in the R's? What rolling in the eyes? Good, Watsy said, breathing in a sigh of relief. You have no idea how many trainers come after me with their lawyers that are challenging me. It feels like I spend more on legal fees than I get paid some weeks. She looked around the stain with a faint smile on her face. So, what are you here for then? It must be apparent for you to just be out so late. The cards! Pinky dipped her muzzle to her over walls and pulled it out before her face poking nap, giving it once over before putting it around her ankle. You heard something about what happened to Sleepport, right? Every pony has, by now. Some pony leveled the entire city with a gyrodos. Correct! That's what they keep telling me, at least. Fluttershy, I mean, they probably doesn't want me to talk to us about you, but we can really use your help. My help? Once he asked, cocking an eyebrow at Pinky's suggestion. I need my help for what? And what does that have to do with Slateport for the matter? Well, studying the destroyed Slateport was chasing after my friend, and probably still is. Are you telling me you know who it was? Or were you there? Wazzy asked, her tone suddenly anxious. All we know is it was a stallion, nothing more. Really? I'm trying to get a group of points together to help track the stallion down, starting with you and Stephanie. This will probably be huge, so... Stephanie, as in a former champion of Hoenn, Stephanie, the chillier scoffed. <laughs> I don't know who you think you are, but there is no way you could be in contact with that Stephanie. I have a number right here, Piggy exclaimed confidently, don't wait to find the phone application on the poker nav. Just after a few seconds of Watsy staring at her, while she fought with the interface, she found it and thrust the poker nav towards Watsy. See, right here, she said in triumph. Yeah, oh, well, that's probably her public number, was he said as she looked over her screen. I mean, it's on her business card, and she stopped for a number, re 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 the number that was displayed before her. This, this is her Pokenav number. How did you get this? We married a kid near Dufrak. She was really interested in me, so she gave us this Pokenav for her number. We've been in contact ever since. Does Stephanie know about your little plan? She doesn't know that I'm talking to Analogs about it, but she knows about what happened in sleep part. Analogs, I'm not sure you're falling. Will you put down her number? Pinky interrupted, banging her eyes at the confused gym layer while putting on her deepest, most disarming smile. If Stephanie is in on this, it must be important. Here, Watson began typing on the screen, entering her contact information right below Stephanie's. Oh, there we go. Naturally, I'll be talking to Stephanie after this to make sure you aren't pulling my leg. Don't expect my number to be the same if you are. Okie dokie! I'll be fine then. Sure, Dassie won't like it if... Piggy clasped the hoof over her mouth. Hopefully Watsy hadn't heard what she just said. Oh, uh, Dassie! Watsy said with a small smirk. Anyway, I need to get some paperwork done and get some rest before I fight any trainers tomorrow. I'm sure you'll understand if I don't see you out. Of course! Talk to you later, friend! Piggy said as she tried towards the area and exit. Smiling, she looked down at Watsy's number on a poker nav. Uh, before you go, are you going anywhere tomorrow? 
Lutzy asked, because he's paying attention just before she reached the exit. A lava ridge, perhaps? Yeah, now send me first down. Piggy exclaimed, trying to be open with her new friend as she walked through the area gates. Lutzy watched Piggy walk away and turned to go back up to her office. Brian the Pony being involved in a sleep board fire and having contact with Stephanie was alarming to her. Making her anxious for the day to break so she could break her crucial phone call. In the dim halls of the stadium, Pinky hop tried with even more than usual, bubbling with new confidence with Watsy being quick to join Pinky's plan was coming together much better than she ever hoped. Much to Pinky's relief, even if the three mares of Equestria didn't know much about Holland, the analogs certainly would. Feeling secure in the knowledge that they now had two allies in their midst, Pinky made her way out of the stadium and back to the Pokemon Center to prepare for the next morning's journey to Mount Chimney. My exciting rainbow will be so excited! The rest of the night had passed quickly, and the rising sun's rays now illuminated the mare's rooms. With less sleep than she had hoped for, Fireside woke with a rumbling in her stomach to find that both her friends were still fast asleep. She sighed in relief to see Pinky back in her bed, not wanting to wake him. She quietly slipped out of bed, slung her back, and made her way down to the main lobby. Multitudes of ponies were lined up for the breakfast table, many more than Fireside had seen in the Pokemon Center. She sighed as she eyed the length of the line, realized it would be quite a while before she had any food in her stomach. Deciding not to wait alone, she took time to pick up her Pokemon before returning back up to the stairs to the room. As she entered, she found both Pinky and Rainbow awake and preparing for the hike north. Morning, Fireside said with a smile, receiving the same greeting from both her friends. Did you already check on how long was for breakfast? I'm starving! Rainbow asked, crying as he heard her stomach growl. Looks like a 20 minute way at least. Rainbow sighed. Alright, but we should get going as fast as possible. We don't need to give that psycho any more time to find us than he already has. Ooh! How did Lady do last night in training? Pinky asked. She did alright! Rainbow cut herself off to stare at the pink pony. Wait, you knew? Yeah, of course. I saw you take your Pokeball when it left. I don't mind, though. I didn't need her for where I went. Pinky, where did she go? Fleurside asked, watching Rainbow confront Pinky as well. Well, I... Pinky was cut off by a loud ringing of Fleurside's Pokedex. Why is he going off now? Fleurside rummaged through her bag to fight for a minute before pulling out the buzzy Pokedex. Shouldn't this only go off our gym fight? Open it! Rainbow hollered an alarm, causing Fleurside to open it in a panic. Trainer, unknown, Rainbow Dash. You have been formally requested for a rematch against the Mallville gym leader at time right now, location Norvasia Mallville. This match will have no lasting effect on. Before the message could end, Rainbow knocked the Pokedex out of Flareside's hoofs and spit out the door, leaving both Flareside Pinky alone in the room. Rainbow Dash! Pinky yelled at the sign Pegasus, and were gallowing out to cast it up to her friend. After jamming the Pokedex back on her pack, Flareside quickly followed suit. Rushed down the stairs and watched Rainbow Fan scooping a hoof full of food directly into her mouth or speeding out the door, leaving behind a slew of disgruntled and tired trainers. Rainbow Dash, wait! Fireside squeaked out. I'm so sorry! She said to the crowd as the anchor punch as seeing Pinky barts out of the Pokemon Center. As he went down the road, he found Rainbow was already a ways away, galloping around a distant corner. Confused, Fireside turned to Pinky. What's gotten into her? How did that best know Rainbow's last name? I I talked to Watson last night and accidentally said Dashie around her. Pinky admitted, grabbing Fireside's Pokemon out of her overwall's pocket. I did get her phone number, though. So that's where it went. Anyway, what was she telling Rainbow again? Fireside stopped as she realized Rainbow was getting further away the longer they talked. Then, then never mind. Come on! Fireside stayed before unfolding her wings and quickly rising above the flailings with a few hard flaps. She went down below and saw Pinky begin her galloping and weave. Through the seats, it saw Rainbow speeding towards the northern edge of Mauville. With Rainbow in her sights, Flareside buzzed the tops of the sky scrapers as he flew to intercept her. Before she knew it, however, Rainbow disappeared to the forest. Thick branches was obscured Flareside's view. After passing over the final building, Flareside made her descent. She glided down and watched Pinky speed around the corner and head straight for her. Pinky skidded to a stop as Flareside landed, both of them peering down the path. I don't get it. Well, does more than she made fun of Jesse, Frank. Pinky asked as he entered her path. She did help me win. At least, I think she did. First I answered as the sign pegs came into view. Rainbow Dash stopped, just past over a small creek with Igni out standing next to her. Rainbow! First I called out, casting Rainbow's attention. First I, Pinky!
Mabel called out, before glaring angrily at Watson. Standing in front of her were right you standing between the two. There! Both my friends are here, just like you've wanted. Now what you want? As Rainbow stood post to strike, Rosalie and Pinky came up next to their friend. All three wanted to see what the gym leader would do. I called you out here for a rematch, that's all. This is a way to apologize for earlier. Why are you apologizing to me? Don't you have your chin to worry about? I do, but your friend came to me last night and told me of your predicament. I talked to Stephanie this morning, and your story seems to check out. She paused for a moment. I still worry about that girl. Who told you my name? Rainbow said before Pinky's tapped on her shoulder. The pink pony was wearing a sheepish grin as he weaved her hoof nervously. Fine, whatever. You came out of here because of Pinky? You can say that. As he said this, he took a few steps, separating her from the right to you. So, I'm willing to give you a rematch, as a small gesture of goodwill. I saw how angry you were with me yesterday, and I must prefer to begin this partnership on favorable terms. It looks like your torch chick has evolved into a capuscan, so you should be more ready than this time. I swear, between that and the Mayanda, you three continue to surprise me. No thanks. I don't need your pity rematch. Rainbow responded harshly. For glaring out of sight, the gym leader stared at her, perplexed. <sighs> I'm sorry it went off like that, but if you're willing to help, I think I can put my bad feelings aside. If that's your choice, I'm fine with it. I know why you would change your last name with what has happened recently, and I don't blame you. You look just like her, was he said, stepping aside, prompting a right you to do the same. If anything happens, call me. Malville City is the largest in all of Hoenn. Every bit of news that passes through here at some point. Good luck. I'm sure you'll get a call for Stephanie at some point today. Thank you. Fireside said. Swainwell and Pinky walked by, passing the gym leader with her right to Fireside slowly went up to catch her friends, passing the right to you, but stopped by Watsy's huff. I now know why your name is so familiar, Fluttershy. Watsy said, it tricky to yell at Pegasus. When I talked to Stephanie, she said something about you being a blueprint. I had read something about that in journals before, and your name came up. I never thought I'd meet you in person, though. Ah, uh, thanks. Fireside said, wondering why Stephanie hadn't said anything about this when she met with her the first time. You don't mind me asking, why did you act like you knew why Rainbow hid her last name from, from the first time? Nobody said a word. I hate to ruin your day about talking about such things, Watsy said, removing her heart from Fireside's way before glancing to the distant mountains. No, 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 look, I think... Let me go do a little quick check here. This is the last Fireside chapter before before the other two we get to the end. We, I need some more heads here. You can't do this! I hear him Mount Chimney is nice this time of year. Oh, thanks. Fireside said, galloping the path to catch her friends. As the implications of Jim Lanier's words lingered. She decided to ignore it for now. Greeting her friends with a silent smile as they began to trek towards Mount Chimney. I can't believe that's Fireside's last scene. <sighs> Next few chapters. And I'm really, really sad for this.